Hi guys, it's me Shazra HD and welcome to another episode of the podcast where today we are giving an early preview for the 2019 Canadian Grand Prix which of course is taking place next weekend in Montreal. Yep, today we're going to preview all the teams and look at how they, in our opinion, will get on in Canada and who is going to be performing well and not so well around that tight street circuit but as ever let me bring in my podcast guest as always niblo and nib uh, how you doing mate and are you looking forward to canada which really should produce uh better racing than monaco i am doing very well mate i hope you're doing well as well but i am certainly looking very much forward to the canadian grand prix next weekend in montreal it will be certainly a, a very early wake up or no wake up at all, just staying up all night for me as the race is on at 4 a.m. So even though it's on at that time, I'm still very much looking forward to next weekend. Absolutely. I think Canada will throw up a better race than uh, last year at Canada for sure. I think last year was a blip. I don't think that's what is to be expected from this year's Canadian Grand Prix. But yeah, I think we will get a bit more wheel to wheel racing than we did at Monaco, even though Monaco was still very exciting. But now let's go on to the teams and first get into Mercedes. Now, they are again the favourites for pole position and the race win in Canada, just like they have been all season long, basically. Um, I think the gap at the top will still be not close, close, but not too big, say, compared to how it was at the 2019 Spanish Grand Prix. I think, say, the next team behind, which I think will be Ferrari, as we'll get onto in a moment, I think the gap is probably going to be two and a half to three tenths per second. There are rumours that Mercedes are bringing a new uh, big upgrade to their power unit. Of course, they can now bring the spec two of their power unit, so they should be bringing something to the Canadian Grand Prix in terms of upgrades to that area. But I think things at the top between them and the next team, which is likely again to be Ferrari, will be a bit closer. But I still expect Mercedes, with two drivers who are very good at this track, to be uh, very quick and to go out and get the win. Uh, Nib, for Mercedes, do you think from behind that teams like Ferrari and Red Bull, do you think they can pressure mercedes or do you think again mercedes are just going to run away with the entire weekend yeah i don't really see a ferrari or red bull challenging mercedes very strongly at canada unless something unforeseen happens mercedes are just the class of the field in all areas of the sport at the moment except for the engine department and with this new upgraded power unit that they are going to be bringing next weekend they're going to be looking to take that back from ferrari and the way that we know mercedes works they're going to be so determined to get that that um tag back for the team with the best engine so i think throughout the year we'll see mercedes make big strides on ferrari's advantage in the power unit and then they will have completely the best car in every single department but I, I certainly expect um, the gap in qualifying to be closer than what it has been for the past two previous races at Monaco and at uh, at Spain between Ferrari and Mercedes. I expect it to be at most half a second. I don't think it will be. I think it will be three to four tenths, uh, but certainly not seven to eight tenths like it has been the past two races. Absolutely. I think if you look at the way the track is, it should be... If Ferrari don't bottle it and their drivers do the best they can, especially in qualifying, it should be about a three-tenths of a second gap uh, from Mercedes to Ferrari. So it definitely uh, will be, again, not close, close, but it will be a lot closer than it has been in previous races. But yeah, Mercedes definitely the favourites for the Canadian Grand Prix. Next up is Ferrari, who... Come away from Monaco with their best finish of the season so far. P2 for Sebastian Vettel. The weekend, though, was quite tough still. The pace of the car definitely wasn't good um, up until race day. And, of course, they had some disasters in qualifying. Uh, coming to Canada, though, this track should see Ferrari 
get a lot closer to Mercedes at the top. I think, I think with Ferrari, they do have a chance of a front row at this track but that only comes down to if any of the mercedes drivers make mistakes on their qualifying lap in q3 for example if say lewis hamilton uh does what he did in barcelona where he made that mistake in qualifying and then there was a six tenths of a second gap from him to his teammate bottas ferrari then could get into say a front row slot but in terms of them being able to go for a race victory, I don't think they have enough. If they're going to win the race in Canada, they have to get pole position. And I don't think Ferrari will have a quick enough car to do so. The, the track does suit them, but not enough for them, in my opinion, to go and get a race victory. Their first race victory of 2019. Uh, yeah, for Ferrari, Nib, do you think... If one of the Mercedes drivers, you know, has a scruffy weekend or, a, you know, a scruffy day on, say, Saturday in qualifying, do you think Ferrari could get in there and really upset the odds? Or do you think they're going to be, say, sitting there right behind Mercedes, kind of hoping for a mistake if they're going to get, say, better than third place? I think next weekend, Ferrari will be hoping for mistakes to finish in first or second place as Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton are both absolutely brilliant at this um, at this circuit, and I don't really see them having a scruffy weekend. So for Ferrari, I think the best they can do is third and fourth, certainly in qualifying in the race. Who knows, something could happen at turn one, or you know, there could be you know just some random stuff that happens, of course, which anything can happen in this sport. We've seen that many times already this season. Um, for example, in Bahrain. But I don't think Ferrari will be good here because in certain parts of the track, the, the track is quite bumpy. And we've seen Ferrari already this year where the track is quite bumpy. Uh, I think especially at the end of the first sector in Australia, they struggled. And of course, you know, we've been talking about that Ferrari suspension quite a bit on social media. And I think that that could hamper them a little bit this weekend and that's why I don't think they will be perhaps as close and quite simply is because they don't have as much downforce as um, as Mercedes and in these regulations to be the team that wins you need the most downforce and that is what Ferrari don't have and that's what Mercedes has and that's why I think Ferrari will be behind Mercedes unless um, you know S Sebastian or Charles can pull out an absolute blinder of a lap um, and get up and get on the front row. I just don't see how, because Ferrari are just a shambles, as we've uh, talked about from uh, post-Monaco. So best, I, I don't really see Ferrari challenging Mercedes at all next weekend in Montreal. Yeah, I think, I think they are going to have to hope for craziness or mistakes. You have to remember, though, this is Canada, if the 2019 Canadian Grand Prix lives up to the usual madness we have at Canada, you never know, Ferrari could win. We've seen teams win at this track that you wouldn't think would win. For example, when BMW won in 2008 with Robert Kubica and had a 1-2 finish. That was because of craziness for the uh, top teams, McLaren and Ferrari at the time. So you never know, they could, they could if there's enough madness, they could get a win. But if things go, say, the way they should do, then, yeah, Ferrari, the best they can hope for is P3 and P4. Next up is Red Bull. Now, compared to the last two races in Barcelona and Monaco, Red Bull are set to drop back because this track just doesn't suit their car uh, as much as those two tracks and also the Ferrari car is better suited to a track like Montreal than it is for Red Bull. So I think Red Bull will be on the third row of the grid. Pierre Gasly, if he's not up to speed, might be uh, in the midfield, at the front of the midfield, because I expect it to be very close in qualifying at times, especially with Pierre Gasly, who is, of course, going to be the slower Red Bull driver. If Max Verstappen does what he has done so brilliantly in, uh, in 2019 and gets the best out of himself and the car, then 
I think on race day he could get a podium if he really fights for it and goes for it and gets the best out of the car. But realistically, I don't see how he can do that. It's going to take Ferrari either having a terrible weekend in terms of mistakes and strategy mistakes and stuff like that. Or again, a bit of madness happening for Max to get onto the podium. Uh, for Red Bull, Nib, do you think that they'll be closer to Ferrari than I expect? I think the gap is going to be probably a quarter of a second from Ferrari to the fastest Red Bull. Do you think he'll be that kind of gap or do you think he'll be closer? I think it could be really close between Ferrari and Red Bull next weekend. We've seen Max Verstappen, how good he was at Canada last year. That lap that he put in during qualifying, that was an absolute stonker of a lap. That was fantastic by Max. So if he can reproduce a lap similar to that from last year to this year, who knows where Red Bull could be. I remember uh, before we started doing this podcast last year, we had a bit of a disagreement of how good Red Bull were going to be at Canada. And that was mainly because of how good Red Bull were out of the corners in the traction zones out of the chicane, which is so, so important that you're good on traction at Canada. But this year, I'm not too sure if they are quite as good out the traction zones as they were last year, because it, there's been reports saying that they've been struggling with the rear end at times. So if Red Bull have good traction out of the chicanes, which is vital at this circuit, I, I think that Red Bull maybe could surprise and could maybe end up even third with Max Verstappen ahead of both Ferraris. But it, just that Honda Power unit, it is improving. It is, it is good, but it's not quite at a Ferrari or a Mercedes level just quite yet. Just quite yet. We've seen that in Monaco going down the tunnel. Max just couldn't gain on Hamilton in a straight line, which really um, hampered him trying to challenge him down into the Novel, Ch uh, Novel Chicane. So I think just lacking a little bit of horsepower will cost Red Bull a really good chance to the podium next weekend in Montreal. Um, yeah, we did have, I remember, a disagreement about that. And Red Bull did massively surprise me, not only with where they finished, but with how quick they were compared to, say, pole position. They were very quick last year, but as you say, they don't have the same kind of car that they had last year. They don't have... Um, say great as you said great traction as they had a year ago so that is going to affect them but I think I think Max in the race is definitely going to be there with Vettel and Leclerc I think in qualifying Max is likely to finish up in P5 uh, but in the Grand Prix it really should be a battle between Vettel, Leclerc, Max Verstappen for the final podium position and it should be a very good one but now let's go on to the midfield a very very tight midfield in 2019 let's first go to Renault Renault in Monaco they had a good car but in terms of the result they got from that weekend it wasn't good enough because they should have been up there in P6 or P7 but only finished down in P9 and that was only because of Daniel Ricciardo's great speed at the end of the Grand Prix so Renault, despite having a good car, again, disappointing result and should have had more points from the Monaco Grand Prix weekend. And that, I think, will cost them now coming into Canada because I expect Renault to, to definitely, even though last year they were great at this track, they had the best car in the midfield, which was quite a surprise. I don't see that replicating itself. I think this um, Grand Prix, this Canadian Grand Prix, I think Renault will definitely not get a car into the top 10. I think they'll probably start, say, one car around P12-ish and then another car around P15, P16. I just don't see the Renault being quick enough in qualifying. In the race, they will improve and they might nick a point. But realistically, Renault are going to drop back quite a bit from where they were in Monaco and I think it is going to be a tough weekend especially with them competing against teams like Racing Point, Alfa Romeo and Toro Rosso and even McLaren and Haas. Um, for Renault, 
Nib, do you think that they can replicate last year or do you think they're going to drop back and really be mired in that midfield? I'm not 100% sure with Renault. Of course, they should have got a much, much better result last time out in Monaco. They could have even got P5, but of course they got the strategy wrong. Um, Ricardo fell behind lots of people in the midfield, behind Alban, Kvyat, Sainz and Gasly when he was all ahead of them. And that just completely ruined his race. He got stuck behind that uh, Kimi Raikkonen train. Of course, when Kimi hadn't pitted, I think, nearly 40 laps in. So Renault, Renault strategy really cost them last last time out at Monaco. They were fantastic at Canada last year. Best car in the midfield up there challenging with um, racing points. But I'm not too sure. I think they will get a car in the points, but I don't think they'll be anywhere near as good as what they were last season for, for Renault. They're just... They're just lacking something at the moment, our Renault. You know, the car looks pretty good, but I, the engine, as usual, is just letting them down ever so slightly. They're just a little bit slower in the straight line than what they need to be, and that's something that they can hopefully improve in the upcoming races. But I'm fully aware that they're going to have big upgrades coming for the French Grand Prix in a couple of races' time, so we've got to watch out for, the, for Renault to really pick up their pace, which they need to do because they are, where are they in the Constructors? They are they are not where they should be in the Constructors' Championship. They should be really in fourth with the expectations that they had coming into the season. In the Constructors, they're currently eighth in the Constructors, which is not good enough for the amount of money they've spent on Daniel Ricciardo and on people that they've recruited at that team. So Renault really need to start improving over the next handful of races. And if they don't, it's going to be uh, bad news for some people at Renault. Absolutely. But that's why I say that Monaco was so disappointing considering how quick their car was because they wasted at least for me six points. And that could be the difference between finishing, say, P7 in the Constructors or P5 or P4. It's that close in the midfield. Also, I just want to make a point about Renault that... In Spain and Monaco, they both uh, really did ruin Daniel Ricciardo's race in terms of strategy. So, at the Spanish Grand Prix, Daniel Ricciardo was being held up behind Carlos Sainz. Now, he did pass him eventually, but then, um, when they pitted him, they put him on the hard compound tie, which, as we know from that race, was performing so bad, and Sainz got back past. And I think that did cost Daniel probably a points finish in the end uh, at that Grand Prix and I think they should have by the way run out that Grand Prix pitted Daniel earlier to get an undercut because he could have again really been strongly in the points and then again at Monaco hitting under the uh, the safety car was and I even said it at the time during the race watch along that Renault might come to regret that and they did because they got held up in traffic for so long they lost about two pit stops worth of time to cars that before the safety car they were ahead of. So Renault have got to improve their strategy because that's two races in a row. They've really lost quite a few you know, amount of points that, again, they could be so critical at the end of this season. Next up, though, is McLaren, a team that are performing very well right now. They're flying high in P4 in the Constructors. They have a 13-point lead for the next team racing point, who are still remarkably P5 in the Constructors. And good news for McLaren. After the two races at Barcelona and Monaco, where I didn't think going into those races they were going to be that good, but uh, they got great results, P8 and P6 respectively, with Carlos Sainz. Now they come to Canada, where their car really should be good because as we have seen so far in 2019 at tracks where straight line speed is a bit more important McLaren do tend to perform better just look at Bahrain and Baku as an example so McLaren are looking I think very good for this Canadian Grand Prix and all they have to do really for me is get one car into the points and continue to build on the lead they do have uh, to the rest of the teams in the Constructors Championship. For McLaren, um, Nib, do you think that they can 
really dominate at the front of the midfield or do you think it would still be close between teams like you know them and Haas or them and maybe Alfa Romeo do you think McLaren with both cars uh, can at this Grand Prix where we think they are going to be very good do you think they can they run away at the front of the midfield I don't think McLaren will run a run a run away at the front of the midfield next weekend in Canada. I don't think their car is quite at that level yet, but as we're seeing with that trend that you mentioned of them being good at tracks where you need good straight line speed, I think they will be at the front of the midfield next weekend in Canada. I say that they won't be running away because I will think that they'll be challenged by Haas, even Toro Rosso, who have been superb this year. But uh, just to... Carlos Sainz, his move around the outside of the Toro Rosso's at uh, at Casino Square or Massine, I think it might have even been Massine, absolutely fantastic. It was video game stuff like you do to, you know, 80 AI on, on the F1 game. Well, certainly Chaz and I would be doing it on 80 AI. Um, but yeah, fantastic by Carlos Sainz and he was fantastic in the race. Of course, he was helped by um, Lando Norris, pace not being quite on it after the safety car um, came back into the pits. But McLaren just gone about their business so far this season, and they've got the points, and they have quite a hefty lead already in fourth place of the constructors, where McLaren really should, at the bare minimum, be with the amount of money that they do spend. Of course, I was just saying that how much Renault spend and how they should be there, but McLaren doing a really fantastic job this season. They they really are gone under the radar. Have McLaren and just want to give a quick shout out to them and Andre Seidel. I, I I'm a big fan of him already. I think he's I think he just talks the right way that you need for a team principal. Big fan of that guy already. So I, I hope McLaren do well in Canada and I think they will do well in Canada. So I'd, I'd expect them to be at the front of the midfield. Yeah, with um. With Andreas Seidel, again, I do like him as well. Um, but to me, one thing that's very important that I've seen is that from him is that he seems to get it. He, he understands um, how to be or to get a team to you know, improve and be a more of a success in Formula 1. I think he does get it. I don't think he's coming into Formula 1 um, completely unaware of how everything works i think he already does get in i think is definitely going to help improve um this team because well they needed someone to fill that role after eric boulier who was basically the person in that role this time last year after he was fired uh, about a year ago they had to fill that role with someone who was new fresh and had a different uh look on the situation and they've got that, so great there. For McLaren, let's get on to the rest of the midfield, though. Next up, Alfa Romeo. Another team, similar to, um, similar-ish to Renault, who are kind of not doing that well at the moment, uh, are Alfa. And I think they really do have to respond to the last couple races, because in Spain, they were terrible. In Monaco, they were good up until qualifying, and then from then on, they were really, again, terrible. And at this track, where well, Alpha should be good, especially with uh, Kimi Raikkonen, who does tend to have some uh, decent results here. They've got to respond, because they're now down in P9 in the Constructors, and they're kind of falling away from where I thought they would be this season. I thought they would be right there for the P4 and P5 in the Constructors. Now... They're not that many points away from P5, only four. But they should be definitely getting more points or, say, more performance out of their car than they have done so far this season. And it's really important that this Canadian Grand Prix, Alpha, turn up and get the best out of their car and get a points finish. Because if they don't, I could honestly see Alfa Romeo starting to slip back from other teams in the midfield, such as McLaren and teams like Haas. So big, big weekend for Alfa. Uh, Nib, for Alfa Romeo, uh, do you think it's vital that they get into the points in Canada? Because again, for me, if they don't, I think they struggle to really compete for a P4 or P5 from the Constructors. 
Yeah, I pretty much agree with absolutely everything you've just said there. Alfa Romeo have been super disappointing for me so far this season. They were woeful in uh, Monaco. They they left their drivers out for so long. And of course, Giovinazzi uh, was a bit, well, more than a bit silly with his little incident, which he caused at Razkas with uh, Robert Kubica. But, you know, Raikkonen behind Russell and Giovinazzi behind Kubica? That you just can't be, you can't, if you're Alfa Romeo, you can't be having, you know, cars behind other Williams cars. You know, it's just not acceptable. Um, and they were absolutely dreadful last last time out at Monaco. So they need to make a statement. They need to score some points uh, next weekend in Canada. And if they don't, yeah, their season's really, really going to be um, hard to salvage because, you know, I don't see them improving a whole lot throughout the season. I'm not, it's, you know, before the season started, I was a big fan of their car design, but I think it's come to show for teams running that sort of front wing like Ferrari and Alfa Romeo that it's not exactly been the best design path to go down and they're struggling with their car, you know. So Alfa Romeo, they need they need to get some points this weekend. Oh, sorry, next weekend. And I'm not too sure if they will. Um, yeah, even if they nick a point in 10th place, that would be enough for me to show that Alpha are still there in the fight with other teams. But again, if they don't get in the points, I think they might start to slip back. And yeah, with Alpha, after testing, and I was there at testing, of course, for the second test, their car looked not amazing. It wasn't anything that you know, really jumped out at you, but it looked like a good car. Um, but yeah, this season, I get the feeling that they just haven't quite got the most out of their out of their car this year. And I don't think, if they do get the most out of their car at certain races, I don't think we're going to see it quite often. I think maybe one or two races you'll see Alpha, you know, having an amazing weekend. Uh, they tend to... Be quite inconsistent, do Alpha at times. They'll have a good qualifying, but then a bad race, or a, you know, a bad qualifying, good race. They're not really putting it all together right now. So, hopefully, as we now get into you know Canada, then the French Grand Prix, then Austria, Silverstone. Hopefully, as we now get into the proper European summer, they can start to find the form that they had a bit more of around Bahrain and Shanghai because they desperately do need it. Now, next up is Haas, and we kind of talked about Haas earlier in terms of how quick we thought they would be. We think that they are going to be basically at the front of that midfield. I think they're going to be probably getting both cars into the top 10. They're going to be right there with McLaren, maybe an Alfa Romeo if, say, Kimi Raikkonen has a very good weekend like he has done plenty of times in 2019 so far. So, yeah, I think Haas are going to be right in the top 10. By the way, I just want to say it is great to see Haas F1 back in the top 10 on a more consistent basis because at Bahrain, even though they were great in qualifying, you know, in the race, they were terrible. But at races in China and Baku, they were so, so poor. And it looked as though this team was really going downhill. So it's great to see Haas getting back to where we thought they were going to be for this season anyway, after testing and the first Grand Prix. Um, and yeah, Nib, I'm sure you echo my thoughts. Uh, yeah, Haas, they're going to be very competitive in the top 10 in Canada. Yeah, I think... Haas will be right there with McLaren all weekend long in the, for the Canadian Grand Prix. You know, I haven't had the greatest start to the season. Very yo-yo-ish as uh, Haas have tended to be over the past few seasons. That's been one major issue. But of course, if you look back at last year's Canadian Grand Prix, they were very, very poor. They were, it, uh, they were struggling a lot to, with the tyres, with the, uh, I can't remember what type, might have been the ultra soft or the hyper soft or the super, super duper, super, super duper soft, because um, we had 200,000 different types of tyres last year. But um, I think Haas won't struggle as much as what they did at Canada last year. I think they showed us at Monaco that they've gotten on top of those issues that they had using the softer tyres last year. And I think 
the next weekend in Canada, Haas will be right there in the fight to be the fourth fastest team. And I think they will be right there with McLaren all weekend long to get, um, to get you know, seventh, eighth, ninth, or tenth. And I think that both cars of Grosjean and Magnussen will make it through to Q3. So I think that Canada, the Canadian Grand Prix weekend will be a really positive one for Haas and just building on that good um, point finish that they got in Monaco, which should have been two points if um, if they'd woken up to the fact that Daniel Ricciardo was catching them monumentally in the final laps of the Grand Prix. But for Haas, I think they will have a good and a very solid weekend at the Canadian Grand Prix. Yeah, um, I'm still quite shocked that um, that Roman Grosjean and that the team didn't alert Grosjean to the fact that Ricardo was taking that much uh, time out of him. But yeah, there you go. Also at Monaco, Haas made the same mistake as Renault in pitting Kevin Magnussen, um, pitting him too early under the safety car. So big mistake. And they paid for it. And they, again, in Monaco, should have scored more points. But at least they got a car into that top 10. Now let's go on to Toro Rosso. As Nib said earlier, they have been great this season. They've scored points in every Grand Prix this season. Except for Baku, where they were great in Baku up until race day. Where they just dropped off the pace quite alarmingly in, um, in Baku. And I think in Canada... I think Toro Rosso, I think they'll qualify outside the top 10, honestly, with both cars, because I don't think they have enough of what is needed to be good, uh, good around this track to get into the top 10 in qualifying. But I think on race day, they are probably going to nick a point, but I don't think they'll be as quick as they were in Barcelona and Canada. If they are, then I think Toro Rosso are a serious threat to every midfield team for the rest of 2019. And it'll be great to see them right up there again if they can be. But I don't think they will. I think they'll probably be around the P12, P13 area in terms of qualifying pace. And then on race day, they will definitely be competing for a final point. Um, for Toro Rosso, Nib, if they do have... A great Canadian Grand Prix, say similar to Monaco. Do you think Toro Rosso do have, for the first time in their history, really, uh, a realistic chance of finishing P4 on the constructors in 2019? I don't think maybe finishing P4 is quite achievable for Toro Rosso, but certainly fifth, I think, is certainly possible for Toro Rosso. They've been very good at every single track this year, picking up points, you know, just going quite about. About the business, and you know, some people might point out, oh, you know, you've said that uh, Renault are doing horribly, you know, but they're only two points behind Toro Rosso in the constructors at the moment in P7. But, but from from preseason testing, it looked like Toro Rosso had one of the worst of cars in the midfield. I thought they're going to be towards the back of the midfield, but they've proven every single race weekend that they have a car capable of scoring points, and I see it being no different. In Canada, I think that they will get into the points with at least one car once again because they just seem to be good on on all types of circuits. So, you know, that whether it's at Monaco, you know, Baku looked really promising before qualifying, but of course, um, you know, what happened happened. But at other tracks where, the, where you need straight line speed, they've got points. I remember Albon got a point at um at Bahrain. So I really think that Toro Rosso will have a, a good solid weekend. They'll be one of the quicker teams in the midfield. And I think they will get a point with one of their cars, whether or not that is uh, Danny Kivia or Alex Albon. I do not know, but I think that they will certainly have, an, once again, another solid weekend at the Canadian Grand Prix. I think, though, uh, with Toro Rosso, one thing that is really helping with how good they've been this season is the fact that and I think it is a fact, and I think people know this already, that basically the Toro Rosso car that they had at the start of the season was a 2018 Red Bull car. A lot of it is 2018 Red Bull racing uh, car stuff. So I think that has helped the team. And by the way, I'm not against that. In fact, I am for that, for that type of stuff, for, you know, assisted team having 
So basically, the other teams' uh, previous years can't. I'm for that stuff, but um, I think that has helped Toro Rosso have probably their strongest start to a season I think I can remember. I think maybe 2015 was another season where they started off strong or 2016 but this season they have been right up there and it's great to see Toro Rosso uh, proving me wrong because yeah coming into 2019 I thought they were really a nowhere kind of team and I thought they'd be at the back of the midfield doing nothing as they were at times uh, in the last couple years in 2017 and 2018. Uh, and next up and last of all really in the midfield is Racing Point, um, Spain and Monaco were terrible. The updates that they brought to the Spanish Grand Prix and from that Grand Prix and beyond were not good. They didn't work out for them. And Racing Point, for me, seemed to have had a real tough time and have really stepped back from where they were in Baku. First four races of the season, they were great. But since Spain, they really have not been at it. As I said earlier, remarkably though, they are still P5 in the Constructors. So if they can get their act together pretty soon, they can still have a great season finishing in the top five in the Constructors, maybe even catching McLaren. So um, yeah, Racing Point, in terms of the Constructors, they're looking still in a good enough position. But for this uh, Canadian Grand Prix, I think Racing Point will improve for sure. Because this type of track does suit the Racing Point car more. But I don't think they're going to be as competitive as, say, they were in Baku. I don't think they're going to be in the top 10. Um, I, think, I think they're going to be kind of... And I we said this um, at the Spanish and Monaco Grand Prix. They're going to be basically where Alfa Romeo are. Maybe slightly better. Maybe the same. Might, uh, maybe slightly worse. Who knows? But they will be around you know, the area where the Alfa Romeo car is in terms of pace and performance, they can definitely finish in the points, no doubt about that, but it's going to rely on a mad race, a mad weekend really in general, and one of their drivers having a superb weekend where they really get the best out of the car. But yeah, I don't think, I don't think they have enough, honestly, to finish in the points. So I think they'll struggle to do so. And I think... They are going to need a quite a few retirements ahead for them to get into the points. Racing Point, I think, will be better at Canada, but they are still struggling. We cannot um, overlook that. And, yeah, for Racing Point, near the last team really in the midfield, yeah, the last two races have really been quite poor. Uh, do you see a massive upturn in form in Canada or not? Sadly for Racing Point, of course, one of their uh, drivers, Lance Stroll's home Grand Prix. I don't think they will improve. You know, historically, we've said this many times this season, historically, Racing Point are good at this track, they're good at that track, but they've been very poor at most tracks, and somehow they're still fifth in the constructors, which is uh, quite remarkable how they're still there. I think that's because teams like uh, Renault and Haas haven't quite capitalised on opportunities that, that they've been given to be able to go on and take that spot from Racing Point. But hey, they are there at the moment, and if they have the points, they deserve to be there. So kudos to Racing Point for that. But I I see them being with Alfa Romeo all weekend. You know, Lance Stroll will get knocked out in Q1, as he very often does, because in qualifying, he's been really super-duper poor this season, um, just getting constantly knocked out in Q1. But I think Sergio Perez... You know, if something mad does happen, I think he could sneak a point, you know, because Sergio Perez is always super consistent and has been has been very good this season, has Sergio Perez. Gone a little bit under the radar, but certainly outperforming where that racing point car has been. We've seen that in China where he was fantastic and finished behind Ricardo in eighth place. But for racing point, I see them having quite a poor weekend and I don't think that they'll be scoring any points if I'm brutally honest. Yeah, I, I think they are going to struggle to do so. Say if we have a boring race like we did uh, last year in Canada, then I don't think Racing Point have um, a realistic chance of doing that. I don't think they do, but we'll see. Hopefully we do have a crazy race. And of course, uh, last of all is Williams. 
Uh, this track will probably be a bit better for them in terms of how close they are to the midfield, but they're still going to be at the back. Uh, let's now, at the end of this podcast, get into our predictions for the top three in qualifying and the race. So I'll go first. So for qualifying, I'm going to go for Valtteri Bottas on pole position because he has been so good in qualifying. I think was a bit unlucky to not get pole in um, in Monaco. He did make a, a couple errors on his, uh, his outlap in trying to get pole at Monaco, but that's just, you know, sometimes that does happen, and he had a bit of traffic as well. So I think was a bit unlucky at times trying to uh, warm up to that pole, posi uh, pole position lap. But, yeah, I think Valtteri Bottas will get pole because he's been so good as of late in qualifying. And then, of course, Lewis Hamilton will be very, very close behind in second. I wouldn't be surprised if we have those two separated by, say, ten thousandths of a second or less. I think they are that close at this track. Uh, and then in third place, I think, is basically nailed on to, uh, to be Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari because compared to his teammate Charles Leclerc, I think he is better at this track, more experienced at this track. Leclerc's only had one uh, Grand Prix weekend at this track which of course was last year where he finished in the points in P10 uh, but Vettel also when it comes to qualifying at this track does tend to be very good and I think Ferrari will have the pace to get into the top three uh, on race day I think Hamilton will win from Valtteri Bottas second Hamilton maybe will get it at the start but I think Somehow, some way, Lewis Hamilton will get the win. Again, from Bottas second. And in third, I am going to go for uh, Sebastian Vettel. Probably ahead of Max Verstappen, P4, and then Leclerc in P5. Uh, Nib, for the Canadian Grand Prix, for the top three, uh, what are you going for? Um, so taking a pole position for me will be Lewis Hamilton. I don't think you can bet against him. At this circuit, he is so quick and good and consistent. At Canada, I don't think he can bet against him, you know. But Bottas, to give him credit, he will be there challenging Hamilton every step of the way. He really has been great in qualifying this year, as Valtteri Bottas being there with Hamilton at almost every um, track, and of course, on many occasions ahead of him in qualifying. So, you, I think you got to give Bottas a lot of credit there. When I think most people could say that Hamilton is one of the best qualifiers that the sport has ever seen. I'd arguably say he's second best to Ayrton Senna. So I think I think a lot of credit has to go to Valtteri Bottas for that. But I think it'll be Hamilton taking pole ahead of Valtteri Bottas, who will be second. Just don't think he'll quite have enough. Although I do agree with you, it could be separated by thousands of a second. And in third place in qualifying, I think it will be Sebastian Vettel for the reasons that you pretty much mentioned. I just think he's a bit better at this circuit than Charles Leclerc. And Leclerc has been a tad poor, of course, none, not his fault in the last race, completely Ferrari's fault. But I just think that Vettel is going to be better at the Canadian Grand Prix circuit. And in the race, I think it will finish the exact same way. So Hamilton winning from Valtteri Bottas and Sebastian Vettel in third. I think it will be a better Canadian Grand Prix than what we've seen last year because that was absolutely horrendous. But I think that we'll see the top three un unchanged. And as usual, I think we'll, we'll be relying on Max Verstappen and the midfield to produce some entertainment for us on race day. Yeah, and I think, by the way, when it comes to the Canadian Grand Prix, I think we will have a good race. I think going into the race, though, do not expect it to be great. I don't think we're going to have a great race. I think we'll have, at best, a good race, say like a race we had in even Monaco or in Australia. A good race, but nothing, you know, great or special. I think that's what we are going to get in Canada. But yet, there you go. Those are our predictions. Make sure in the comments section to let us know what do you think will happen at the 2019 Canadian Grand Prix? But guys, that has been it for this episode of the podcast, previewing the 2019 Canadian Grand Prix. Nib, as ever, thank you for coming along for this podcast and previewing this uh, this race. Indeed, mate. Thanks for having me on as per usual. And thank you for all your support on the podcast, guys. We really do appreciate it. 
But we'll see you. I'll see you next time when I'm probably on stream for the Canadian Grand Prix race watch along. Yep, thanks, mate, as usual. And yep, that is it for the podcast. By the way, the next two videos coming up on the channel. Uh, there is actually a difference now to the schedule of videos. There was going to be a news video on Tuesday and then the video about the McLaren Indy car or Indy 500 failure. Uh, there has been a slight uh, change to the schedule. Now, I will be doing the McLaren video, but I am also now going to be doing a video about Ferrari. I'll get onto that once the video is hours away from being uploaded. I'll announce what that video is about. But yeah, I'm going to be doing a Ferrari video instead of a news video. And I'm excited to, um, to cover that certain topic. But yeah, thank you for watching, guys. No matter where in the world, hopefully you're having a great day. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more podcast episodes like this. We do the podcast every weekend where there is not a grand prix and also don't forget to like this video for more content like this again comment down below what you thought this video and what you think will happen at next weekend's 2019 canadian grand prix in montreal canada at the circuit de gilles villeneuve and also don't forget to follow me on twitter and check out my discord server link below in the description that's the best place for notifications my videos and streams and is the hardcore has a hdf1 community make sure to join and follow me on those certain places but until next time guys it has been me chaser hd goodbye <laughs>